It is the height of summer, and the spectacular views over Simmons' yacht look surprising with unusual shades of brown, gold and fading greens. A lengthy drought and the relentless sun and heat have changed the colours of the lower valley. These stunning views lead us into a deep forest. The Forest of Dean. A deep and dark woodland where the sunlight falls mesmerisingly on the ferns and the bracken. A helping hand for the forest comes from far away. The southwest of Britain has a mild and wet climate. This is because of the warm and fast Gulf Stream an Atlantic Ocean current which begins at the tip of Florida then follows the eastern coastline of the US and Canada. It then crosses the Atlantic towards Western Europe. The Gulf Stream helped create temperate woodlands where humidity-loving plants such as the ferns can thrive in great numbers and variety. But such forests can only exist if the humans allow them to. It is difficult to imagine that this ancient and primeval looking forest could have been lost forever when the drive to make charcoal for the iron industry had reached its peak in the 16th and 17th centuries. Eventual policy changes and enclosures saved the forest. The wildlife still remembers the trauma of human impact. Roe deer disappear into the depth of the forest at the crack of dawn. The brown rabbits may remain active for a little longer. But one of this forest's most elusive mammals is aware that humans pose a serious threat to it. So it stays hidden and retreats into the safety of the forest at the first instance. A dried up puddle of water attracts birds that would otherwise be very quick and skittish, such as coal tits and blue tits. But an ultra rare hawfinch puts in an appearance too. It is the largest finch found in the UK. While the finches and tits drink in the dark undergrowth, other birds hunt for insects in the open. Robins are such bold and common birds now, but a long time ago, they too were woodland specialities. The spotted flycatcher though, usually remains loyal to the original habitat.
Blackbirds may be a common sight in our gardens and parks today, but a long time ago they were confined to the woodlands. Some still prefer to stay here. It is not always possible to be visible in the deep forest, so performing a sweet melody is a great way to attract a mate. The top of the canopy hides some wondrous treasures. The unique call of a shy bird alerts us of its presence. A European Nuthatch And not just one. As the fledglings gather for a quick feeding session, we are treated to a rare sight of four nut hatches in one screen. The falling light is often at premium in the dark forest. So the aptly named speckled wood butterfly loves to bask in the dappled light in the woods, fiercely protecting its favourite spot from other butterflies. Small open meadows support wild flowers such as these ragworts and the wild flowers are loved by insects which form the basis of the food chain. This insect may look like a wasp but it is a wonderful example of biomimicry as this is actually a hoverfly. Not all insects feed on nectar. This beetle is following its exceptional sense of smell towards a unique prize. All obstacles cleared, the beetle has made its way to a dead shrew. It is odd for a dung beetle to be attracted to a dead animal, but recent research has proved that carrion may act as an important secondary food for dung beetles. This behaviour can be stronger amongst beetles that find themselves in areas where large herbivores and the dung that they produce are not present in large numbers. As the beetle tries to move the dead shrew out of the way from the main path, we cannot help but wonder what the future of the forest of Dean holds. It is a forest that is proof that given time, nature can recover and create wildlife wonderlands.